Hello, I'm Miss Mandia, and welcome to my channel. Today I'm reviewing 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim, which is a vanillaware game that I suppose is best described as a sci-fi adventure that incorporates real-time strategy battle segments. Now this game was recently ported to the Switch, but this review is based on the PS4 version. That said, I will be focusing on the storyline and the core gameplay, so hopefully you'll find this video useful regardless of which version you're looking to buy. So in the beginning of 13 Sentinels, we're kind of thrown right in the middle of the action. We're watching this large city come under attack at the hands of giant alien mechs, which, for some reason, are being fought off by a group of school students. Each of them are piloting these big battle robots called Sentinels, which have a range of different builds and abilities. After completing the first tutorial battle, we're suddenly taken back in time to a point before the invasion. This is when we're properly introduced to Juro Kurabe, who serves as the first playable character in the story mode. The cool thing about this game is that you actually experience the story from the perspectives of 13 different playable characters, some of which have stories that take place in completely different decades. But most of the action happens here in 1985. Juro seems to be having strange dreams about the impending kaiju invasion, but his memory and understanding of what this means is foggy. He soon learns that two other classmates, Shu Amaguchi and Iori Fuyusaka, have been experiencing the same dream. And from here, the story progresses in a very non-linear way. So the game is divided between what are called Remembrance and Destruction segments. The gist of Remembrance is that we're going back to look at each pilot's memories of the events leading up to the kaiju invasion. You can select each character and play out their stories in any order you please, which are revealed in a series of chapters. It's kind of similar to a visual novel in that there are branching points, though the game itself only has one ending. Now, it starts to get pretty complex because you're constantly jumping between different characters, different eras, and different story branches, but it feels really rewarding once these disjointed pieces start to come together. I actually think this was done really well. Despite how hectic it might seem to have to uncover different pieces of the story in this way, I think it felt well balanced and never too overwhelming. In the beginning, there is a strict order that you'll need to play character prologues in, which primes you for the experience in a very intentional way. After that, there's more freedom, and you can choose which rabbit hole you want to dive into. Occasionally, story locks will stop you from progressing down a certain path, if you haven't seen enough to really get a full handle on that story yet, but the game will tell you exactly what you need to do to move on. Usually you'll need to do something in another character's path, or progress through more battles, which is the next thing I want to discuss. As the name implies, destruction is the battle half of the game. There are a number of stages, and usually your main goal will be to destroy enemy kaiju, while minimizing damage to the city and the mainframe terminal. Now, I think the combat is really neat. There are four different generations or models of Sentinels, each with their own unique abilities. Broadly, we have first generation models, which are melee. Second generations are all-rounders. Third are long-range specialists. And fourth are flight support. As you may expect, they all have different strengths and weaknesses. For instance, while first generation models can do a lot of damage to singular ground kaiju, they're not as well equipped for handling large groups. Fourth generation models can fly, so when they move they don't have to follow the grid of the city like the rest of the sentinels do. That means they can get to a target much quicker than the older models, but don't necessarily have the same firepower. First and third generation sentinels have some very useful electromagnetic pulse skills, which can be used to bring down airborne enemies so that everyone else can take them out. These are some of the many things to take into consideration when selecting which units you want to deploy for a given battle. Now, you can have up to six sentinels in the attack force, but another thing to keep in mind is that piloting sentinels is very taxing on the human brain. Each team member can only participate in two battles before succumbing to brain overload. When this happens, they'll be unselectable for the next battle. 
If you want to get around this, there is an option to do an instant refresh on all your pilots, but you get experience bonuses that increase with every consecutive wave you complete without refreshing. So if you go this route, you'll have to forfeit those bonuses. So constructing teams that are both effective for the specific battle and able to sustain your streak without hampering the succeeding battle is another fun part of the game. To make this harder, each battle also has bonus objectives, and to fulfill these you may need to deploy a specific pilot in your team, so you'll have to hope that they're not suffering from brain overload if you want to keep your consecutive win bonus and get that bonus objective. This isn't a great feature because unless you know the game inside out, it's going to feel like a very random thing, but it is an optional objective. Okay, now the battle system is honestly a lot of fun. It was much more fun than I was expecting. Like I mentioned, to beat each stage you'll need to fulfill the win conditions, and for most battles it's pretty simple. Defend your terminal and destroy all enemy kaiju. How well you do this is measured by the percentage of damage done to the terminal, the city, and the sentinels. The game uses these numbers to determine your score for the battle. Now, even as someone with very little experience playing RTS games, I thought the battle system was really enjoyable. Different attacks have different cooldowns, which can be between 3 to 8 seconds. And whenever a unit is ready to attack again, the game will automatically pause, so you have ample time to strategize and really think about what you want to do with them next. As I said, each sentinel is unique. I personally really like the second generation sentinels. They can put out guardians, which act as decoys, which is a very valuable skill, especially when you have massive amounts of kaiju on their way to the terminal. They also have sentry guns, which do a whopping amount of damage, especially when you invest in upgrading them, which is the last thing I want to mention real quick. Whenever you complete battles or character chapters, you're rewarded with meta chips, which are a currency that you can use to upgrade your sentinels and also your terminal. You can increase stats, buy new skills, or make your existing ones stronger. The terminal rewards have limited uses in battle, but they can be really useful and can sometimes save you from death if a stage is really going south. You've got things like group heals, instant cooldown resets, and powerful attacks. So that's my rundown of the game. I may have gotten a little carried away explaining the battle system, but I really wanted to talk about it because I'm just so impressed by the intricacies of it and the way that all the elements work together. I thought it felt very easy to get into, but I do like that there are ways you can challenge yourself if you want to as well. If it wasn't obvious, I think 13 Sentinels is a fantastic game. What I love about it is that, in my opinion, it really does excel in both story and battle. What initially lured me in was not only the premise of the story, but the method of storytelling. It felt very up my alley as someone who adores games that make you unravel the story in a non-linear way. Much like the Zero Escape series, which is my absolute favourite. I haven't really touched on the aesthetics of the game, but as you can see from this footage, it has a really beautiful artistic style. It's also full of music that really builds upon the atmosphere and enhances the experience as a whole. Overall, I personally don't have any complaints about this game. I think the main criticism I've seen from people is that the story can be quite complex and a little over the top at times with perhaps too many unnecessary twists. This isn't something that bothered me personally, but I can understand the sentiment. I think it's really down to personal taste though. I think the majority would agree that 13 Sentinels has a fantastic story and a wonderful ensemble cast to see you through it. If you watched this through to the end, thank you so much. I really do hope you found this video useful. And if you do pick up 13 Sentinels, I would love to hear what you think of it. I hope you have a lovely day and I will see you next time.